Now, before I start with type 2 problems, there are few things which we have to understand. The first point is why there are only 365 days in an ordinary year. What is the logic behind 365 days? This is what we have to understand. And this is the reason time taken by Earth to revolve around the Sun. It is 365.25 days. Due to this, we just consider 365 days in an ordinary year. Now, what you need to realize in the first year of first century, in the first year of first century, the number of days which we have considered is only 365, while we have thrown 0.25 days away. When the second year will end, again, we have considered only 365 days, and then these 0.25 days are again thro thrown out. Why we are throwing them out? Because if you think about 0.25, after solving it, you get to know that, okay, 0.25 means 1 upon 4, 1 upon 4 of a day. In a day, there are total 24 hours. So, what I'm doing, I'm throwing 6 hours. And the reason why we throw 0.25 days, because 0.25 is a negligible value in front of 365 days. So, just compare 6 hours. 0.25 is equivalent to 6 hours. So, 6 hours when compared with 365 days, it's a nothing value. So, what we do, we throw out these numbers. Now, if I keep on throwing 0.25 days, for four years, you realize that it is equivalent of one day. And I cannot just throw out one day like this. And because of this reason, after every four years, what we do, we add one extra day. We add one extra day as 29 Feb, right? And that particular year is called as a leap year. So this is the reason why a leap year repeats itself after every four years. I hope you were able to understand this. That is not all. There are few exceptions which we have to understand and for that please realize that the time which I have told you, the time taken by earth to revolve around the sun 365.25, it's an approximate time. This is not the real time because if I have to write down the exact time, this is also not accurate but it is very close, 365.242 days. So what would you realize at the end of every year, please see. This 365.242, which is very close to the real data, it is less than 365.25. So, can I say that after the end of every year, I am adding how many extra days? Just subtract, you would say, sir, you are adding 0 0.008 days after the end of every year. If you look at this error of plus 0 0.008 days, it represents that at the end of every year, I am adding these many days extra. After looking at this number, you would say, sir, it's a negligible error. It's a nothing error. 0 0.008 days is nothing. But when we look at the same error for the first 400 years of a century, in the first 400 years, if I ask you, what will be the total error? This error comes out to be just multiplied. So 0 0.008 can be written as, I remove the decimal. I have to put three zeros into 400. Solve this. This would be 32 upon 10. After further simplifying it, you would say, sir, let me put a decimal. 3.2 with a plus sign. So this plus 3.2 days signifies in the period of 400 years, the same error of 0 0.008 amounts to plus 3.2. It means I am adding 3 days extra, approximately 3 days extra in my calendar. And to compensate for this error, because I have added 3 extra days in my calendar, I do not consider 100, 200 and 300 as the leap year. What I am trying to tell you, we have just discussed that the leap year comes after 4 years. A leap year repeats itself after every 4 years. That means that every number that will be divided by 4, should be leap year. If you look at these numbers, 100, 200 and 300, these years should be leap year. Here, ek -ek extra day hona chahiye. But to compensate for this error of 3 days, 3 extra days, what we do? We do not consider these century years as leap year. But the moment you think about the next century year, the next century year would be 400. We consider it as a leap year. यहाँ पे हमको कोई प्रॉब्लम नहीं है क्यों क्योंकि ये जो एरर क्रिएट हुई है ये कितने टाइम में क्रिएट हुई इन अ पीरियड ऑफ 400 इयर्स इसीलिए हम 400 ईयर को लीप ईयर कंसीडर कर लेते हैं 
और यही रीजन है कि जब भी मेरे पास एक सेंचुरी ईयर आता है तो सेंचुरी ईयर के टाइम में मैं उसको फोर से डिवाइड ना करके फोर हंड्रेड से डिवाइड करता हूं क्योंकि तो सबसे पहला सेंचुरी ईयर जो लीप ईयर है मेरे पास वो फोर हंड्रेड है नो इफ यू आस्क मी विच सेंचुरी ईयर आफ्टर फोर हंड्रेड वुड बी द नेक्स्ट लीप ईयर आई टेल यू जस्ट फाइंड द नेक्स्ट मल्टीपल ऑफ फोर हंड्रेड इट इज गोइंग टू बी द एट हंड्रेड ईयर इट मीन ओनली दो सेंचुरी ईयर आर लीप ईयर Which are multiple of 400 or divisible by 400. इसके अलावा जो भी century years हैं वो leap years नहीं होंगे And that is the reason why we divide a particular year by 400. Now after understanding this, the next thing which I want to discuss with you, this is something which I had discussed with you in the first lecture, calculation of number of odd days. But this time we'll do the calculation for this time period for the first hundred years of century, two hundred years of century, three hundred years, and four hundred years. This is very crucial for the upcoming question. So please listen to me very carefully. Now please focus on the first part. Find the number of odd days in the first hundred years of a century. So uh, in the first hundred years of century, the number of years are hundred. Now what I want first, I want you to find how many leap. So I'll divide. This time range, there are hundred years, and I'm trying to find out multiples of four. So if you divide, you get to know. Okay, uh, many of you would say, sir, there there should be twenty five leap years, but in reality, the number of leap years are only twenty four. Reason being, the last year of this century, hundred year, it is not a leap year. I have already discussed the reason with you. Hundred is not considered as a leap year, in spite of the fact hundred is divisible by four. और क्यों नहीं कंसिडर करते हैं क्योंकि हमको उस एरर को कॉम्पनसेट करना था तो सेंचुरी ईयर के केस में मेरे को उसको फोर से डिवाइड नहीं करना है फोर हंड्रेड से डिवाइड करना है आई होप आई मेकिंग सम सेंस सो हाउ मेनी लीप ईयर्स ओनली ट्वेंटी फोर लीप ईयर्स सो वट आर दीज दीज आर लीप ईयर्स इट मीन्स वट एवर इज रिमेनिंग सेवेंटी सिक्स इज गोइंग टू बी दी आंसर ऑफ ऑर्डनरी ईयर नाउ यू ऑलरेडी नो इन अ लीप ईयर नंबर ऑफ ऑर्ड डेज आर टू वाइल इन एन ऑर्डनरी ईयर द नंबर ऑफ ऑर्ड डेज इज ओनली वन So just find out the number of odd days. From here you will get 48, and 76 into 1 is 76. Just try adding the two values. 48 plus 76 is 124. If I'm not wrong, but as you know, the answer of number of odd days can never be more than seven. So I'll again divide it by seven to find out the remainder. What would be the remainder? Let's find 717, 7749. We'll get a remainder of five. so this remainder is nothing but the answer for number of odd days it means in the first 100 years of century the number of odd days are five a very important result for us likewise if i ask you find the number of odd days in the first 200 years of the century please realize in the first 200 years can i divide this 200 in the set of 100 100 years can i divide these 200 years as first 100 years and next 100 years in the first 100 years i already know the number of odd days is 5 okay now for the next 100 years the last year is 200 again we do not consider 200 as a leap year so can i say for these 100 years the answer for number of odd days is going to be 5 only kyunki yahan pe bhi jo 200 year hai उसको भी हम लीप ईयर कंसिडर नहीं कर सकते तो फिर से नंबर ऑफ ऑर्ड डेज कितने निकल के आएंगे फाइव एंड नाउ इफ यू एड द टू प्लस फाइव एंड प्लस फाइव द टोटल नंबर ऑफ ऑर्ड डेज विल कम आउट टू बी टेन बट सिंस द आंसर ऑफ ऑर्ड डेज कैन नेवर बी मोर देन सेवन वेल डिवाइड दिस थिंग बाई सेवन अगेन टू फाइंड आउट द रिमाइंडर रिमाइंडर वुड बी थ्री तो हाउ मेनी ऑर्ड डेज आर देर इन द फर्स्ट टू हंड्रेड ईयर्स ऑफ सेंचुरी यू वुड से सर थ्री ऑर्ड डेज Let us do the same calculation for the first three hundred years. So I already know in the first two hundred years, the number of odd days are three. And now I have to just think about the last hundred years of this period. Again, we cannot consider the three hundred year as a leap year. So it is going to behave in the same way as the first hundred years were behaving. How many odd days? Again, five odd days. Simply add the values of odd days. You get to know. Okay, this is eight, but since I'm getting the answer more than seven, 
I'll divide it by 7 to find out the remainder. It would be 1. So how many odd days are there? In the first 300 years, it's 1. And here comes the most important number for us. In the first 400 years of century, how many odd days are here? So you already know, in the first 300 years, the number of odd days is 1. Let me directly write down 1 here. And now if you think about the last 100 days of this period, just think about the last year of this particular period. I am talking about the 400th year. Since 400th year will be considered as a leap year, therefore the number of odd days are going to be 1 more than 5, means 6. And now if you add the value of odd days, you get to know it is equivalent to 7. And when you divide 7 with 7, you will get a remainder of 0. It means in the first 400 years of century, the number of odd days is 0. I hope you were able to understand from where did I get these values 5, 3, 1, 0. Even if you don't know the logic, just remember the values. In the first 100 years, the number of odd days is 5. For the first 200 years, it's 3. In the first 300 years, the number of odd days is only 1. In the first 400 years, the number of odd days is only 0. Now, adding 0 odd days means the day will not change. So, if you have understood this, it is now time to start with our first problem. So, let us start with type 2 when the reference is not given. In type 1 problem, a reference was given to us. But in type 2, the challenge is there is no reference. And without reference, it can be challenging for some of us to find out the answer. So, let me share with you how can I answer the question where a reference is not mentioned. I have to find the day on 24th May 2014. So how would you start this? Very easy. If I ask you, what was the day on 1st January of 1st AD? You would say, sir, the first day is considered as a Monday. It's a fact. It was Monday. Now, since I want to enter in 2014, so let me think about a multiple of 400. I'll tell you the reason why I'm thinking about a multiple of 400. But for now, just think about a multiple of 400, which is very close to 2014. 400 ki table mein aane wala ek aisa number, jo 2014 ke kaafi close ho. Please, isko cross nahi karna hai. Iske aas paas hume rehna hai. So tum bologe, sir, wo number hai fifth multiple. 400 into 5 means 2000. So if you add, 2000 years which is a multiple of 400 can i say that the number of odd days which i have to add it is going to be zero now let me tell you the reason as you know in the first 400 years the number of odd days is zero likewise in any multiple of 400 the number of odd days is going to be again zero so 400 or any multiple of 400 will behave in the same manner. Behave in the same manner means usme jo number of odd days honge, wo same honge. So just add 0 odd days. And this way you would be able to find the day on 1st January since I have to add 2000 years. So if you add 2000 years, you will reach to 2001. Please don't make the mistake of saying that sir, the date would be 1st January 2000. No, we are adding 2000 years. Um, 2000 years ko add kar rahe So, first year and 2001 ke beech mein. 2000 ka difference hona chahiye na. I hope you got the logic. So, the day must be Monday. Adding 0 odd days means the day would be same. Monday. And once I reach here, now I have created a reference for me. And now answering this question is a nothing deal. I know that 1st January 2001 is Monday. And now I want to find the day on 24th May 2014. Uh, let me do one thing. Let me first enter this year. I'll keep the date same. Let's keep 1st January only. Let us first enter in the same year, 2014. Just see the time difference from 2001 to 2014. How many years are here? You would say, sir, these are 13 years. Now, what you need to define out of these 13 years, how many of them are leap and how many of them are ordinary? So, 2004, a leap year aega. Then you would say, sir, 2008, then 2012. 2016 would be out of the uh, range. So, there is no question about it. So, how many leap years? You would say, sir, three leap years. 2004, 2008, and 2012. Three leap years. And the remaining are going to be ordinary years. Okay. 
in a leap year the number of odd days is 2 while in an ordinary year there is only 1 so just multiply and add so when you add everything you get to know okay the answer for total number of odd days is 16 but since i am getting the answer more than 7 let's again divide it by 7 to get the remainder the answer of odd days comes out to be 2 it means if I want to go from this point to this point, I should add two odd days because I do not want to find out this. Yes, the objective is to reach here. And now let me directly go to, now please realize we have entered the same year, 2014. And now the month is different. We are standing at January, but we want to go to this month, May. So let us do this calculation month-wise now. So, in the month of January, we know the total number of days are 31. But since we are already standing at the first, we are already standing at first January. So how many days are left? You would say, sir, 30 days are left. So would you be able to convert 30 days in the form of number of odd days? Very easy. You would say, sir, to get the answer of number of odd days, I'll divide this value by 7. So 7, 4, 28, just get the remainder 2. So how many odd days? 2 odd days. In the month of Feb, now please think about it. We are talking about which year? We are talking about we have entered 2014 and 2014 is not a leap year. So how many days are going to be there in the month of Feb? It's a normal Feb, 28. And 28, if you divide it by 7, we'll get a remainder of 0. So how many odd days you need to add? 0. Then let's think about March. In the month of March, 31. So 7, 4, 28, you'll get a remainder of 3. April. 30 days, you will get a remainder of 2. And then we have May. But in May, we just want to go to the 24th day. So 24th divided by 7 again to get the remainder. We will get a remainder of 3. Okay. So these are the values of number of odd days. Let's find the sum. So from here, you get to know, okay, these are 10 odd days. But since again, I am getting answer more than 7 so let's divide to get the remainder it would be 3 so if i go from 1st january to 24th may 2014 from this point to this point how many odd days i have to add i have to add 3 odd days now please focus here we know the day on this date 1st january 2001 it was monday so if I want to go from this point to this point, how many odd days are coming in between? 2 and 3, 5. Means if I want to go from this point to this point, how many total number of odd days we need to add? 5. So just add 5 odd days. Adding 5 odd days means I have to leave 4 days in between. So Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday. So leave 4 days and this would be the answer of your question, Saturday. If you're not comfortable in going forward by five odd days, what you could have done, you could have used that rule, the shortcut, complementary with respect to seven. So if I ask you what would be its complement, you would say, sir, seven minus five, it would be two. But I have to change the sign. So instead of going forward, what I could have done, I could have gone backward. Now going back by two odd days means I leave Sunday and then whatever is the second day, it is going to be the answer. So can you see that I'm getting the same answer? So this is the shortcut which you could have used to get your answer. So I hope through this example, you were able to understand how to approach a problem based on type 2 when the reference is not given. Uh, so this is the last question which I wanted to discuss. In the next lecture, I'm going to discuss one another type where we learn how to find repetition of calendars. If you have enjoyed this session, please like, share and subscribe. Thank you and have a nice day.